Hollow. And this is our tiny house we built and our yurt in Roseburg, Oregon. I love living in the tiny house. I think he was very excited to move into it. He would tell all his friends and all the neighborhood kids, they'd come over and just kind of love this small home because it's very unique and different compared to everyone's home around here. He's proud and he would tell me all the time, my mom built a house, my mom did this. Mom, you can do everything. And he grew up watching me build. And I think that gave him a lot of excitement because he would then realize that everything can be possible growing up with the idea that your mom can do this and you know it's very empowering so i'm originally from los angeles and i moved here december 2012 and i work for a nonprofit for the emergency food system and i am a single mom and i have two dogs and one cat I bicycle a lot. I actually do long distance bicycle touring and I've bicycled from Portland to San Diego. <laughs> so I've really gotten to explore and see Oregon and the coast of California. And I really just fell in love with Oregon. This area is very beautiful in nature and I really wanted to be here for that, to bicycle and live an outdoor life. So this tiny house is on a foundation on a very small lot here in town. It's 12 by 24 and the year is 24 feet in diameter. So we're in a very small piece of land. It's about 50 by 60. It was empty lot and we built the tiny house specifically to allow for the yurt to be built on here as well. In the future, our plans is to build a wraparound deck and a seating area in the back side of the house. So the house is built up to code as a single family dwelling residential home here in town. And we have the yurt as a auxiliary dwelling unit. So it's kind of like our outdoor living room. So I'd be more than happy to show you guys the tiny house inside. Come on in. Welcome to our tiny house. It's about 500 square feet and we built it so it can grow with us. I'm nine and my mom started building the house when I was two years old. So this is the living area. So over here I have some storage for some shoes and I have an area here for some plants and our little rock collection. And up here I have my mini split that way I can have some heating and cooling at any season. And I also have uh, these two south facing windows for some light. That way we can get a little bit of warmth during the winter. We also have a lot of hanging plants. I built some copper pipes so they're very sturdy and I can either run curtains if I need to. Obviously there's nothing better than having nature curtains. <laughs> so this couch I located off of Craigslist. It has a middle section that can come off. I took it out because we like snuggling and we can't really snuggle over this. <laughs> So on this side of the living room is our gaming station. We spend a lot of time watching TV, but also spend a lot of time playing video games. We have my computer chair here, and we also have some more storage underneath for shoes. And the TV is mounted on the wall, so it's really easy to move or bring around if we need to. So over here is our eating area and I built it for me and Apollo to sit and eat and also to grow more plants because I can't have enough. 
I used to have it higher, like a bar height, and we had higher chairs. But after living with that for a while, it just wasn't very convenient for Apollo. So I brought that down um, because it's on copper pipe. So you can actually unthread it and change the height of the table. So on this side of the house is the kitchen and I built it so it can have a flow starting from the fridge. Food comes out and I can prep it and then to the stove and then straight to our dinner table. And I have uh, this uh, little counter that I can pull out. It's on wheels and this is where I mainly store my pots and pans and any of these little spoons. So I vented the hood range straight out of the wall because I didn't want to run it through my roof. The less holes I had in my roof, the better. So that way it gave me flexibility to be able to have storage right above and have access to some more pots and pans above here. And I have these really cool little shelves so I can kind of double stack spices and anything I need. I love cooking with fire and gas and I also got it because it has an air fryer and that's one thing less of an of an item that I needed to store in the house so that way I can have uh, full flexibility to dehydrate or fry of course I can roast or bake in here and it works really well with us because we do cook a lot I just put this magnetic knife holder because I didn't have a safe place to put them. That way things can kind of be out of the way and the more things I have accessible out of the way, the better. <laughs> I have enough counter space, I feel like. I also have some cutting boards that do go over the sink if I needed to prep and wash more produce. And this sink, it actually is very functional. It's really deep. And I think having a big sink in a small space where you're prepping and washing a lot of your dishes, it's really important. So I was gonna have a dishwasher, but after living with this sink a few years, now I've realized that I don't actually need a dishwasher. It works out really well for me. It's just one less appliance that I have to fix if it broke in the future. I opted for an espresso maker instead of a dishwasher. They are both very expensive, but I realized that I would much rather have this. So we have open shelving up here because I really want to be able to access dishes. I really love handcrafted pots or plates and I like displaying some of that. I wanted to build my own cabinets, but I didn't have time and I had a little bit of money. So I chose to buy them pre-made. I painted them and I made them look nice with some handles. And I also bought them specifically to pull out. That way I didn't have to dig to the back. So I got this fridge, it's counter depth. So I measured it specifically so the small door in the back could open. And I also have some storage boxes above and some shelving. And those are some of the items that I don't need all the time. So this is our back door. It leads to the backyard. It's our second exit. And because of the building codes, we need an additional door to be able to evacuate the building. I've always wanted to live in a yurt. I just grew up seeing these round homes and I was just so mesmerized by the Mongolian style of living, very nomadic. And so I was like, I want something that I can pick up and move if I needed to. So when it was time, I purchased it without planning. <laughs> The city was like, we can't do this because it's on an empty lot and it's in city limits. There's a lot of codes and regulations. So I kind of had to put the you're in a storage unit <laughs> and I went to work and I said, what can I do then? And to put this yurt up, they said that I'd have to have a structure on the property and then I can have a yurt as an auxiliary dwelling, but not to live in. 
So I said, okay. So I figured I went to the building department and I talked a lot with the city and the county. We got to a conclusion that I could build a small home only because I figured out the right questions needed to be asked. So how small can I go? How, what's the legal of this or what can I do with that? After pushing, they finally said, okay, you could technically go this small. We don't like to because, you know, most homes are about 1,000, 2,000 square feet and you're building something for the long run. Also, most banks don't like lending out a mortgage for something like this, but it's possible. So I finally got my building permits after building plans with my kid's dad. Uh, he's an artist, so he's really good at drawing and he's really good at math. So we both kind of put our brains together and we came up with blueprints and they accepted the blueprints. And <laughs> after that, it was like, okay, let's go to work. And we started digging the foundation and um, because we were kind of like buying everything as we got paid, we didn't have money budgeted for equipment like um, heavy machinery. So we had to do a lot of things by hand. Um, and that took a long, long time. This side of the house is the bathroom and we have a really big door opening. So that way, as my kid grows, because he will be tall, I built this door to be pretty big. And I have these specific measurements for the door and the ceiling to meet. So they're really, really close. Um, but it works out really well. And I'm really glad that I measured it 30 times. <laughs> so we can show you the bathroom. And in here we have a full size washer and dryer. The dryer is on gas and it works out really well because it dries clothes much faster. And I have some plants hanging. That way we can kind of feel like the water heater isn't just open and there's that small window. I put that window together and I'm really proud of that little glass block window. And I have the shower right over here. The shower took six months to finish and I'm really proud. I cut every single tile and I made a scene where this is the ocean and then over here is a sunset and I have some clouds. So over here is a tree and it took a long time to figure out how to piece it together and what kind of tree it was gonna come out to be. I actually sourced almost 100% of these tiles from a secondhand store or for free. And I found these tiles that are wood grain and I was very excited because that was gonna match my tree. <laughs> so this corner is a little bit small, but because I have curtains here, I, a lot of times I just kind of move this over and I stand here and I have this section of the vanity. I can bring this down and use this as a little workstation if I'm getting ready. And also I have this to open. I actually changed this door because the hinges used to be on this side and it wasn't going to work out. So I moved the hinges to the other end. So over here I have the stairs and this dog crate worked out really well and fit perfectly right underneath. So I realized that I want more storage as Apollo grows older. He's into sports and I know that he's going to want to bring more items home. So once I build the storage staircase, I am going to have it uh, built around the dog crate because I still really need somewhere for him, for the dogs to be in if I needed to. And up here is our bedrooms. Come on up. So on this side is my room. And as you can see, I have my closets right here. My closet also works as a privacy screen and that way we have a little bit of separation between my room and his room. So I've thought about building a wall here and then having the closet on the other side of the wall. But when Apollo grows up, if he wants to, he can move into the year and this can just be my space.
Well, as you can see, this is the roof and it is at a steep pitch because I didn't want to build a second floor with an attic. Essentially, we are what you call an attic, but it's conditioned. So now we can come in here and this is my bedroom. So right now I have my bed on the floor, but eventually I want to buy a bed frame that I can have storage underneath. And right now it just kind of works out where I have my baskets to the left. I have two windows on both sides. That way we can have some cross breeze in the summertime and allow for some ventilation. This is my bedroom. This is where my clothes are. Here's my computer and I have a lot of Legos right here. I like my bedroom because I can go under my bed. It's big enough for me to go under my bed with um, the cat. These, these are called Squishmallows. They're super squishy and you could do pillow fights with them and it's super fun. I started building the house with my child and his fa and the father and it was very challenging obviously because both of us never knew what we were doing or had experience doing really building a house. Um, so it was a lot of stress and raising a child and going to work and having finances. By the time we got the walls up and the roof, we realized that we kind of grew apart. And then at that point, I took on the project myself. So I finished doing the inside, the plumbing, the electrical, the gas line, everything, the cabinets, uh, the flooring. <laughs> so that was a challenge because I never thought that I'd be building a house by myself. <laughs> Besides the fact that he stepped away from the project, I still had help from friends. So if there was like a weekend someone was available, they'd come over and help me stain some things and, and I'm terribly afraid of heights. The roofing, I had my kid's dad help me with that because he did not have any problem getting on top of this really high pitch roof. <laughs> and I, as as scared as I was, I would get on this 24 foot ladder with this metal roofing on my hands as well and just like pushing that up. Obviously I was screaming and cursing the entire time, but I knew like nobody else is gonna do this for me. I have to push through. So that was a huge breakthrough for me and just kind of keeping faith. And I kept telling myself, you can do this, you can do this. This is your house, you can do this. And it really, really pushed me to go beyond my limits. Welcome to our yurt. This is a 24 foot yurt and we got it from Pacific Yurts in Cottage Grove. So the tiny house is our main living space and we have the yurt as a hangout spot. So I get to do art in here. I can work out or we can hang out and watch TV or I can watch TV in the tiny house and he can watch TV out here. So I originally wanted to live in the yurt because it's round and I feel like I'm in a spaceship and it's also very nomadic so I can break it down, move it if I needed to and it feels really open and free. I love how the dome brings in the natural light and I can lay here and look at the moon or the stars and it just really feels really warm and natural. So I have this California king size bed. I got this so we can have guests stay or my family can come stay. And it also serves as a uh, storage underneath. I have some ladders. I have uh, some more racks underneath. I like to collect lumber when I come across it and I'll store that under here as well. So when Apollo is a teenager, he can have the choice to stay out here and this can be his bedroom or I can have this as a bedroom. 
I did not get a loan, so everything was very budgeted, so I had to be very strict with um, my finances. We were very lucky to have family to help us stay with them. We also had a Volkswagen Vanagon that we converted into a camper, so we kind of lived in that for a little bit, and then we'd live with some friends for a little bit, just so we could not really pay rent somewhere that was like a lot of money. The house itself with all materials, because I did resource a lot of free material or discounted material. And so at the end, with all my receipts and everything, it was about $30,000. It was very, very cheap. <laughs> so this is a family property. It's been kind of a land leased out to us. And we're in the process of just paying off a balance, kind of like a mortgage, but there's no bank involved. So it's a contract between families. I'm thinking in about two, three years, it'll be paid off. It was about $30,000, pay about four sixty dollars a month. And that goes straight to the balance. As long as we just pay the balance every month, it's, it's ours. Yes, this is my first home. It's really special to me because growing up in a family that experienced poverty and we lived in we really weird situations. I always grew up with this idea that home was very special and that I needed to figure out how to find my own home that was a real home and not an apartment or sharing a space with you know someone else. I also had my mom building really weird closets growing up. And so I always had this idea that like my mom's like doing this weird thing and she's cutting wood. <laughs> what is this idea? So it really worked out and she would always tell me like, there's nothing you can't do to make it work. My mom coming from an immigrant family, she's like really hands-on and DIY. And I think that instilled a lot in me and making sure that I can create a life for my child and generation so we can move away from survival mode. I think this idea of like this perfect square finished home is scary and I think that's why a lot of people are scared to step into that building process because they're like it's never gonna look like you know this contractor came in but I think we need to like erase that illusion and just realize that nothing's perfect in life and sure you don't finish trim and that's okay and maybe like you cut two pieces of wood differently and that's all right too you know so I think the more we showcase like homes that are like very quirky more people might feel more inclined to building a quirky home if it's not perfect then that's okay watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.